Good morning. Today we're going to talk about matter and atoms. If you have your foldable, go ahead and take it out so we can get started. You'll want to pause this frequently so you can take notes and draw pictures. Let's go ahead and get started. How are we similar to the Earth, the Moon, and the stars? When you first think about it, humans and objects in space have very little in common. Or do they? We all have matter. We're all made up of atoms. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. Mass is defined as how much matter an object has. Volume is how much matter occupies a space. There are three phases of matter. You're probably familiar with these phases already, solids, liquid, and gas. Let's take a second and look at some different characteristics and see how solids, liquids, and gases differ from each other. There are three main characteristics of a solid. Solids have particles that are packed very tightly. They don't flow easily as a liquid would. And they have a fixed shape and volume, which means it's difficult to change. If you look at this picture, you'll notice that the particles are packed very, very tightly and don't appear to move. So when we think of objects that are solids, you might think of your computer. You might think of your house. You might think of the sidewalk. All examples of solids. Let's move on to gas. Gas particles take the shape of its container. For example, if I'm boiling a pot of water on the stove to make spaghetti and I have the lid on it, those gas molecules spread out in that remaining space to fill up the em what would be empty space above the water. When I take the lid off of the pot, those gas molecules or that steam flows out into the kitchen, takes up space. There's lots of free space between those particles, as you see in this picture. Oftentimes, gas molecules are represented with arrows, which show movement, because we know that they're free flowing and there's lots of space between these particles. Liquids flow very easily. A liquid takes the shape of the container it occupies. For example, that might take the shape of your soda can. It might take the shape of a water bottle. It might take a shape of a pot of water you're boiling on the stove for some spaghetti. Liquids have a little bit of free space between particles, but not nearly as much as a gas. Take a look at this picture and go ahead and draw it in your chart. All matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are the basic building block of matter. If you think about the smallest object that you can see, you might think about a grain of salt or a grain of sand, or you might think about a piece of dust floating in the air. We all know those are very, very small particles, but an atom is even smaller. If I took myself and shrunk myself down to the size of an atom and put myself next to a grain of salt, that grain of salt would be as big as Mount Everest. That's how small an atom is. So we know atoms are so small, we cannot see them with the naked eye. So there's three parts of an atom. We call them subatomic particles, sub, smaller than an atom. There are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Both the protons and the neutrons are located in the nucleus of the atom. The nucleus is the center of an atom. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons, also located in the nucleus, don't have a charge. They're neutral. For example, if you have two friends and they're fighting over something, 
you might say, I'm not taking sides. I'm going to stay neutral. I have no opinion. Lastly, we have electrons. Electrons are found orbiting the nucleus in a location called the electron cloud. Electrons have a negative charge. Now we know that the atom is very, very small, but the electron is actually 2,000 times smaller than a proton or a neutron. So of the three subatomic particles, an electron is going to be our smallest. Let me give you some ideas to help you remember the charges for the different types of atoms. P for proton, you can think positive. P proton positive. They start with the same letter, so that will help you with that charge. Neutrons. We know neutrons have a neutral charge. If you look at the first five letters of each word, they're the same. N-E-U-T-R. Neutron neutral. So you can remember that neutrons are neutral, which means they have no charge. Lastly, if you use your imagination, think about the E in the word electrons. A capital E is made up of four negative signs, one for the top of the E, one for the middle, one for the base, and if you turn the negative sign on its side, it makes up the spine of the E. So we've said that we have a nucleus and inside the nucleus, we would find the protons and the neutrons. The nucleus is located in the center of the atom. The nucleus is where most of the atom's mass is. So when we take a second to think about the nucleus, it's very, very small. If you would imagine a nucleus, let's imagine a stadium, a football stadium, maybe a big professional football stadium. If that whole entire football stadium was the atom, the nucleus would be the size of a marble sitting on the 50 yard line. The mass of that marble would be 115 million tons. So the nucleus is small but has a very, very large mass. Let's take a look at this diagram of the atom. You have protons, neutrons, and electrons, A, B, and C. Go ahead and take a second, pause the video, and label which is which, and circle and draw an arrow to the nucleus. Okay, let's get started. A. A is pointing to the negatively charged particle in the electron cloud. A would be electrons. B is pointing to the circle that is empty in the nucleus. Because it's empty, that means it does not have a positive charge and it does not have a negative charge. That means it is neutral. It has no charge. So B would be the neutron. C is pointed to the positively charged particle in the nucleus, which is our proton. Lastly, if you circled that center part of the atom and labeled that, that is your nucleus. Our next activity is a little fill in the blanks practice. So go ahead, take a second, pause it, fill out your answers, and we'll take a look in just a minute to see how you did. Okay, here we go. The center of the atom is called the nucleus. The nucleus is made up of two kinds of particles, the proton and the neutron. Protons have a positive charge and neutrons have a neutral charge. Most of the atom's mass is in the nucleus. Tiny negatively charged particles that orbit the nucleus in the electron cloud are called electrons. Great job. Lastly, I have a challenge for you. On a separate sheet of paper, go ahead and create a triple Venn diagram and see what you can find that similar 
and different about the protons, neutrons, and electrons. You might have to get a little bit creative, but I know you can do it. Good luck.